Maple Grove going to have it? Right on oh. front, they score! Hi there, and welcome to Sports Jam. I'm John Jacobson. And I'm Jay Wilcox. Ahead today on the show, conference play takes over as we get into the heart of the January schedule. We'll meet a highly ranked YZ wrestler who has an exciting style in our Sports Jam spotlight. Plus, we'll talk to the Red Hot Osseo boys basketball team. Up first, boys basketball. The Hopkins boys are piling up the points and wins. The Royals are ranked number one in Class 4A and look like a definite championship contender. They faced late conference opponent Edina Friday. Hopkins State champion boys cross country team honored at halftime. But before that, first half play, a pretty up and under move by Walt McGrory of Edina to cut the Royals lead to five. But Hopkins is a pretty good player by the name of Amir Coffey. Meets a couple of defenders to the hoop for a leaning layup. Two of its 21 first half points. Coffey also gets it done on the defensive end. McGrory trying to get to the hoop, but Coffey swats it off the backboard. And then later, Coffey can dish as well. He dribbles inside and gives to Joe Hedstrom for the easy lay-in underneath. And he has a lot of help, too. Vinny Shahid splits two defenders and somehow gets this shot to drop in. He scores 16 points in the game. The play of the half belongs to senior guard Xavier Johnson. Getting that one to drop. Hopkins leads 43-19 at the half. They go on to win 82-63. The Royals are now 15-0. Cooper's boys basketball team is also on a good roll. The Hawks enter the week with just one loss this season. They hosted Richfield in a Metro West Conference game. The driving layup won't fall to watch Melvin Newburn clean up with a rebound dunk for Cooper. They go up 20 to 12. Richfield responds in transition as Antonio Maddox with a nice fake keeps it himself and scores two of his 22 and it's tied at 20. B. John Newburn misses but his older brother Melvin snares the rebound and scores on the putback on his way to another good game for Cooper. A nice play for the Spartans as Jake Hartke with the bounce pass to a cutting junior stone for the hoop. Melvin Newburn hands it off to Brian Mayfield for the open three for Cooper. The Hawks take a 35-30 lead into the halftime break. Second half and they send it ahead to Melvin Newburn for the big jam. He scores 27 to lead all scorers. Nathan Hill drives for two more plus a foul as Cooper wins 80 to 68. They added a win over Minneapolis Roosevelt on Saturday. Osseo and Champlain Park have been among the top teams in Northwest Suburban Conference boys basketball for several years. Last week marked the only regular season meeting between the Orioles and the defending conference champion Rebels. Highlights from this one, DJ Hunter follows his own miss to score as Rebels Jr. scores his team's first seven points. McKinley Wright gets the steal for the Rebels and quickly feeds a pass ahead to Melo Atkins for the layup. Champlain Park leads 16-14. Two quick passes lead to a layup for Osseo's Cameron Betty as Osseo surges in front. They lead by six. Final seconds of the first half. Betty follows the miss by Allen Anderson with a put back for two. Osseo's up 33-28 at halftime. The Orioles made just one three-pointer in the first half, but Dante Jones hits one of four Osseo triples to begin the second half. With Champlain Park big man Theo John in foul trouble much of the night, Betty had his way inside. The senior scores 26 points. Still, Champlain Park made a run. Brian Smith with a three. The Rebels got as close as three points. John Bezdecek, though, scores here and draws the fourth foul on Theo John. And that three-point play extends Osseo's lead to six. Zach Tyson scored 20 points in the game, including this corner three, as Osseo wins it over Champlain Park 77-64 to remain unbeaten. We'll hear from the Orioles later in the show. The Osseo girls also scored an impressive win over the Rebels that night, rolling to a 64-40 victory after holding Champlain Park to 13 points in the first half. Michaela Hamola and Kiara Russell each had 15 points for Osseo. Prior to that win, Osseo showed it can be a comeback team when needed too. The Orioles at home against an Armstrong team that had not won a conference game. The Falcons came ready to play this night. Nice up and under move. Carly Kreschel scoring two of her 17 points. Ash Patterson, a nice game off the bench for the Falcons, chipping in with 10 points. Falcons up by seven. 
Osseo's Mina Port delivers a nice bounce pass to Kate Klein for the 10 foot jumper. The Orioles start to rally. Kiara Russell scored 14 first half points, including this drive from the wing. The Orioles pulled within two by halftime. Big game for Armstrong freshman Masengo Makanda. She scores here, draws a foul, 23 points in the game. The game stays close in the second half. Port scored nine points after halftime. There's a three scored by Russell, the conference's leading scorer, and then Port to the basket for two. Osseo rallies for a 69-65 win over Armstrong. Park Center's girls have had some ups and downs, but the Pirates played very well as they hosted Totino Grace. The Eagles looking to bounce back from an early deficit. Jenna Meyer knocks down a long three from the right side. And she pulls the Eagles within five points. Good quick passing for Park Center. Leads to an open look for Ann Simonette, and she steps up and buries it. 19 for Simonette in the game. Park Center leads 27-15. Summer Blakemore picks up the loose ball for the Pirates and starts the fast break, setting up Aja Michael for the layup. It's 36-19 Pirates at the half. Grace trying to fight back into it. Meyer sends it ahead to Julia Solwald for the three, but it's too much of an uphill climb for the Eagles. Megan Dubois steps into the passing lane here for the Pirates and gets the layup. Park Center hands to Tino Grace its first conference loss, 73-45. Well, they haven't been in the same conference for a while, but Plymouth neighbors Armstrong and Wyzetta still meet in several sports. They went head-to-head -head in boys swimming on Thursday. In the 200 medley relay, it's a close one as Wyzetta anchor Zachary Kennedy just edges Armstrong and Connor Smith by 78 hundredths of a second. In the 200 freestyle, the Trojans' Quinn Lansing takes the top spot in 148.92. A few seconds back in second, Armstrong's Josh DeRuder. To the 200 IM and Ryan Wolschlager of Armstrong takes the top spot in a time of 207.16. Brandon Sherman of Wyzetta is second. In the 50 free, Connor Smith of Armstrong wins in a time of 22.67, but it's Wyzetta winning the meet 95 to 88. And John Armstrong faces Champlain Park at Jackson Middle School Thursday, and then Wyzetta hosting Hopkins on Friday. Time for a break here on Sports Jam. Next up on the show, girls and boys hockey highlights plus wrestling and gymnastics. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Jam. As we hit mid-January, we're heading down the home stretch of the regular season in girls hockey. The Lake Conference has five pretty good teams and wins are hard to come by in the league. By Zed on home ice on senior day to take on Hopkins St. Louis Park Saturday. On a power play, Kylie Hanley shoots for Hopkins. Sarah Stelter with a blocker save, but Stella Haberman knocks it out of midair for a goal. Another look at the great hand-eye coordination by Haberman and it is one to nothing Royals. Wyzetta answers though, the point shot is blocked. Sophie Schutz backhander is deflected in by Meg Ransom and it's a one to one score. 41 seconds later, the shot from the point hits traffic. Wyzetta digs it loose in front and Allie Wiedla tucks the puck between goalie Annika Carlander's pads to make it two to one Trojans. It stays that way deep into the third period when Kate Glover circles out front late in a power play for the Royals and beats Stelter to tie the game 2-2, two two, and this one goes to overtime. Late in OT, Weedla with a great chance, but she's robbed by Carlander as this game ends in a 2-2 two two tie. Brex girls edged arch rival and top-ranked Blake Saturday 1-0 in overtime. Mustangs also had their hands full as they hosted Andover last week. Huskies strike first, but Breck freshman Carly Bennett scores on the wrist shot, tying the game at 1. Andover works a perfect two-on-one. Michelle Holmes to Clara Buderak for a 2-1 Huskies lead. Breck gets two in a row to take the lead. Sydney Brezza buries the rebound and it's three to two Mustangs. Andover rallies in the third period. Holmes tucks in a rebound for a four to three lead. But Breck again evens the score. Brezza picks the top corner. The game goes to overtime tied at four. And Bennick wins it for the Mustangs. Her rebound shot finds its way in. Breck wins a great battle over Andover, 5-4. to four. 
In boys hockey, Armstrong Cooper and Osseo are battling in the middle of the Northwest Suburban's West Division standings. First of two meetings this season comes at Osseo's Dick Bra Arena. First period, Osseo's Eric Lyons picks up the loose puck in front of the net and is stopped, but Anthony Fetzik is there for the rebound to make it 1 0 just two minutes in. Armstrong Cooper takes the lead with 10 minutes left in the period. Nicholas Holscher breaks in alone, beats goalie Jordan Mazzatelli, and it's 2 1 wings. Osseo's turn off the faceoff win. Fetzek one times a blast past goalie Keegan Odell to tie things up at two. Still in the first, Osseo's Mac Johnson to Boone Almquist. His shot beats Odell. Orioles in the first period up 3 2. The Wings' Andrew Burns turns a quick two on one. He passes to Eric Evans, who stops, and Burns is there for the tap in. And the Orioles' lead is cut to one. In the third period, the lone goal belongs to Osseo. Cameron Perner shot redirected right to Fetzik. He completes the hat trick and gives Osseo a 5-3 win. Well, there are no ranked Class 3A wrestling teams in our area. Two of the better squads in the northwest suburbs met up as Maple Grove traveled to Wyzetta. At 120, Gavin Peterson gets the takedown for the Crimson on his way to a an 18-3 decision. 132 pounds, Jack Herbies dominates for Maple Grove. He wins at 25 to seven for Tech Fall. At 138, Wyzetta's David Corey rolls his opponent over and gets the pin here for the Trojans with the cradle. A great battle at 160 as Wyzetta's Dan Herda gets a takedown with less than 30 seconds left in the match to tie the score. Then Herda gets a takedown in overtime and he wins it for the Trojans 9-7. At 182 pounds, Caleb Eugene gets a first period pin for Wyzetta as the Trojans build a lead. It's still close going into the final match, but Wyzetta's Bryson Wilkins seals the victory with a pin, and the Trojans win the duel 37 to 25. District rivals Osseo and Park Center also hit the mat in dual meet action Friday on the Pirates. Home mat after a pair of Osseo wins. Park Center's Gunnar Nelson takes Dominic Smith to his back in the 120 pound match and gets the pin to get the Pirates on the board. They trail at 10-6 at this point. After three open weights for Park Center at 145, Osseo's Damon Lingison picks, on the, picks up the ankle for a takedown. He beats Preston White 10-0. At 152, Osseo's Ethan Cruzada shoots and then puts the bear hug on Robert Nguyen to take him down. Cruzada gets near fall points and wins by tech fall to make it 37 6 Orioles. At 160, Osseo's Adam Lanners doesn't waste any time. He takes Dylan Diddy to his back and gets the pin just 30 seconds into the match as the Orioles continue to roll in this one. Park Center does get a win at 182 pounds as Kenneth Allo shoots for the double leg takedown. He beats Joseph McGee 13 to 5. But Osseo dominates the match overall. Jared Sabalos works for and eventually gets the pin against Fred Williams at 195 pounds. Osseo cruises to a 55-16 victory. Saturday, the Orioles wrestled at the Brooklyn Center Concordia Academy Tournament and placed second behind Tatino Grace. Rockford places third, host Brooklyn Center Concordia is sixth, and Cooper places eighth. The Northwest Suburban Conference title and gymnastics will likely come down to the winner of the February 5th meet when Maple Grove hosts Champlain Park. The Crimson picked up another conference win last week when they hosted Osseo Friendly. Crimson 8th grader Nadia Abid wins the vault. She turns in a meet best score of 9.1. A scary moment during the warm up period on the uneven bars for Maple Grove as the apparatus collapses while Natalie Young is on the bars. And it looks worse than it turned out as both she and assistant coach Jason Bell walk away unhurt. And then Young comes right back a few minutes later on the bounce beam and she wins the competition, scoring an 8.875. Out of the floor exercise where Osseo's Laura Payne earns the high mark for her team, scoring a 7.325 for her uh, routine there. And the floor exercise was won. By Maple Grove's Alex Karras, she scored a 9.15 on her way to winning the all-around competition 
Maple Grove wins the meet. No bar scores at all because of the collapse. So just three rotations for each team were scored. So that was the first seeing the bars collapse. Pretty scary there. No one heard, as we mentioned. But I'm sure the district will be looking into that company that installed those bars during the off season into the new floor that they put in that gym. Boy, a tough thing to see, and uh, definitely got to give her a lot of credit for getting right. back up and <laughs> and uh, competing on the next event and, and doing a great job at it too. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's the one and only time that we yeah. see such a thing. Next in our Sports Jam Spotlight, Jason Malolo profiles a football and a wrestling star from Wyzetta. Following a great season on the football field, Wyzetta senior Corey King is a highly ranked wrestler this winter for the Trojans. Jason Malolo profiles King in this week's Sports Jam Spotlight. Corey King has put in a lot of work in the wrestling room over the last three years, and right now, he feels better than ever. I've never felt so comfortable being on the mat, um, even with tough situations. Uh, we would just went to Rumble on the Red, a really tough tournament for the Midwest, and we did well as a team. Um, there was a lot of guys. Every match was tough. King is ranked fifth in the state at 220 pounds, and his confidence on the mat is at an all-time high. King credits second-year head coach Eric Swenson for helping him develop his mental game and raise the expectations for the entire Trojan team. Mentally, I'm so much tougher. It's, it's crazy. Um, since Coach Swenson got in here, uh, from the moment that he got in the room, summertime meeting him, I was like, this man is crazy. <laughs> this guy has, has ideas of what we want to do. What is, what is his problem? Um, he's totally changed every single wrestler in this room by far. Uh, you know, I feel, I, feel a little, I feel a little bad for the guys that hadn't had him yet because he's, he's the real deal. He, he's taught us how, how to wrestle, how to beat ranked guys, how to be confident in yourself, this how to be a complete wrestler. Prior to wrestling this winter, King starred for the Wyzetta football team. After a down season in 2014, the Trojans went 8-3 and three this fall. Can't find anyone, and down he goes, back on the 42-yard line. Corey King with the sack. Ending that junior year, 42-7 at Rosemount was rough. Like, I've never, I've never felt so sick to my stomach, ever. But um, it, it felt so good to finally get over that hump against the Creed game. I, I think I shed a couple of tears. I was like, Whoo, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We're good. But um, it, it, felt, it feels so good because now we have these younger guys have a blueprint of what they need to do. It's because we lost it. We definitely lost it. My freshman year, I was like, oh, we're going to state. No worries. I don't got nothing to worry about. Sophomore year, ah, we're going to state. Nothing to worry about. I don't got to work hard. What's that? No. It is a grind 24 7, all six, 365, all the time. That's what how mentality we have to have if you want to go to state. And so that's what we built, and that's what hopefully that continues on these next few years. With section wrestling tournaments just over a month away, Corey King knows how and where he wants his time as a high school wrestler to end. And that's at XL Energy Center grappling for a state title. I don't think my mission of you know, wrestling will be complete without me making a stand. I would be lying to you if I said that we weren't trying to go to state and not and I and and I've said to him before forget going to state we're talking about placing in state there's not next year for him he's a senior King has narrowed his list of colleges to Bemidji State Southwest Minnesota State and Winona State ideally Corey says he would like to play football and wrestle in college but his primary focus athletically in college will be football Sports Jam returns in a moment as John talks basketball with the Osseo boys. Welcome back to Sports Jam. The Osseo boys basketball team enters play this week unbeaten. A couple more conference games this week, including Maple Grove on Friday night. And the Orioles join us now on Sports Jam. Head coach Tim Tyson along with John Bezdechek and Alan Anderson. And Alan, let's begin with you. and. Tell me about this team's unbeaten start. How have you guys done it so far? Uh, you know, it's all about defense, you know, keeping stopping teams under 57 points. And Coach prized that, and we do that, and we, we like the results. You got two big conference wins this past week against good teams, Armstrong and Champlain Park. Was the defense in those games, too, that got it done for you? Oh, yeah. It came down the stretch. Defense had to be on point, and we got a couple stops. And we like the results coming out of that, yeah. 
All the wins count the same, but how big were those victories for you to beat teams like that? That's the good wins. Good wins. Those guys are big teams. Last year, they're one of the top five teams. Some of them are still the top five teams right now, and it was a good experience to beat them. Yeah. You're about halfway through the season. What things can still improve for your team before you get to the section tournament in, in several weeks? You know, I feel like, you know, we still got a lot of work to do, obviously. You know, we're not the biggest team, so we're going to run into some bigger teams that we have seen so far. So, yeah, keep playing the way we're playing, and we'll be fine, yeah. Al, congratulations on the good start. Good luck this week. Thank you. John Bestichek, this team, as Alan mentioned, plays great defense. And is that something coaches have really emphasized or you guys take pride in doing? Yeah, we work a lot of, on it in practice, trying to get better. And that's something that leads to our offense. So we like going fast break and running teams up and down the court. In watching your team, it seems like you guys play as a unit, no matter who's on the floor. There's not necessarily one star. You guys all can shoot the ball, all defend. Is that been a, a big key to the success of the team? Yeah, every game we got different players stepping up into different roles and and stepping up when it matters, and that helps a lot. Of the wins you had so far, has there been one that's to you that's been particularly satisfying? Um, the past week has been uh, really fun for us. It's, it's not been surprising. We just played really well as a team together, and that's been nice. You get Maple Grove this coming Friday. What do you expect from a very good Grimson team? Uh, I expect it to be an exciting game. I hope a lot of people will come out, but uh, hopefully it's a nice, uh, good game for everybody to watch. Good luck this week. Thank you. Tim Tyson, I know in, in talking to you, you expected this team definitely be better one loss record than a year ago, but are you surprised at how good you've been so far? A uh, little surprise. You know, I think the kids have accepted the challenge of, you know, kind of stepping up this year. And, you know, the biggest thing is that for us, it's been a team effort and kind of embrace the slogan all in. And for us, that means all, all eight players, nine players who step on that court have to kind of accept that challenge that, that steps in front of them. The successful teams you've had, is this more of a team effort than maybe other teams where you had like a Bridge Tussler or an Ian Tyson or going back Xavier Reed or Carrington Tankson? You don't have necessarily that superstar. We got a lot of really good players. I think you're right. I think we have a lot of depth. Um, as I mentioned, I think nine or six players have nine points or more average. Um, if that's the case, other teams can't really key in on one certain player. Uh, last night was a great example. Cam, I think, is our third or fourth leading scorer. Comes in with 26 points last night. Uh, that's that's invaluable. So uh, we got to keep doing that. And hopefully, you know, with our defense, a lot of opportunities uh, with scoring kind of occurs for a lot of our kids. Your next three conference games aren't easy. Totino Grace has improved this yep. year, then Maple Grove and Elk River after that. Does that help keep the focus when you know you have some good yeah. teams yet to play? Exactly. You know, we can't rest right now. We, we can't take two steps forward and then one step back. So uh, we have good senior leaders, and we expect them to kind of keep everybody in line and, and focus. So uh, that's kind of what we're going to go with. Great start so far. Good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it. Thanks. Osseo boys basketball team, another couple of big games this week in the conference. And again, they will host Maple Grove here on Friday night at 730, part of a girls boys doubleheader. We'll take a break and come back and wrap up Sports Jam in a moment. First, our plays of the week. individual move crossover dribble spin the spin move a lost art but very difficult to guard Neil Ayers arms strong all the way up and in Celebrate winter on a frozen lake. Mark Saturday, February 6th down for the Fire and Ice event at Parker's Lake Park in Plymouth. Get more details at 12.tv. Our games of the week are a girls boys basketball doubleheader as Maple Grove visits Osseo Friday. We'll have both games live on channel 12 and 12.tv with the girls at 5.30 and the boys at approximately 7.30 or catch the replays Saturday and Sunday nights. And that will do it for this week's Sports Jam. Next week we're on starting Tuesday because of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. We'll see you then on Sports Jam.